Joining us right now is former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. And Mr. Speaker, great to see you. I was just wondering this past week, do I have too much hope that maybe they're tired of overreacting to everything Trump says and will start calling balls and strikes with Joe Biden? As I never give up hope on America, especially when you're talking about the highest office in the land. I think you just pointing that out helps clear up quite a bit, that they always want to take a clip of what President Trump says, but never all the way through. Well, that just means you are trying to cheat to get a vote. Why don't you win on the merits of the idea and let the idea win at the end of the day, then America will win on that basis. What I find kind of interesting is you could say, I feel like I'm winning or I feel like I'm losing. But when you're presented with hard numbers that shows you're losing, at least admit it and tell us what you're doing about it or what you don't <laughs> like about the poll. But listen to the Biden's reaction to these poll results that show the president, the former president winning in almost every battleground state. So There's not a he, part of you that's a little worried because no, you seem to be no, off kilter a little no, bit. No, okay. I feel that Joe will be reelected. But when these polls, like the Wall Street Journal one, land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states, that... no, he's not losing in all the battleground all states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. We are winning this election for a number of reasons that have everything to do with our commitment to our country and foundational principles and values. We are the ones who understand what is at stake in this election. Mr. Speaker, they're not winning. No, they're in denial. I mean, poll after poll. And the interesting part, too, if you, if you dwell further down, I mean, if you go to, like, a um, Nevada or Pennsylvania, they're not just losing in the polls. They're now losing in registration. They're down, like, 200,000 of um, Democrat registration compared to Republicans in the last cycle in Pennsylvania. And these are states they're winning by 50,000, 70,000 votes. I mean, really, when you look at those swing states, it's, it's pretty clear. President Trump has carried those for a number of, a number of months now. And that's, that's concerning. And if you sit back and say, no, they're not, you can't fix the problem. The first solution is acknowledge you have a problem, then go after to try to fix it. Yeah, very interesting. You're a prolific fundraiser. I don't know how the House replaces you or the Republicans replace you, and even your enemies know that. But so far, the RNC had a pretty good march, $65 million. They're getting their feet underneath them. Total campaign cash, $93 million. I don't have the exact numbers from March on the DNC yet, but they almost double that. How much is that going to hurt the Republicans? Well, we can make it up, and that's what we need to do. We don't always have to, we don't have to have more money. We just have to have a good message. And remember, this election is going to be about Joe Biden and the job he has done. It's a report card on him. And the number one issue out there is the border. And he's created this problem. There's no new policy that passed in the House or Senate that he signed. The House passed a very secure bill. But He's ignoring that problem as well. You find that you won't need as much money, but we need enough to get the message out. They're trying to drain all the money from President Trump, putting him in these false cases into court after court, and drain his money. That's why the primary's over. If we unite, help the RNC, the NRCC, and I'd always tell you, your very first dollar should go directly to the candidate, because that's the most powerful money you have, because the candidate gets to reserve TV time at a lower rate than anybody else. Help them defend themselves. And I'm still out there helping candidates raise money. I'm going to make sure it's easier for Republicans to win more seats in Congress this cycle than it was for the last two cycles. It's going to be a huge week in the House and for the country and for our foreign policy. Speaker Johnson says he's going to try and get Ukraine aid on the floor. Israel aid uh, in the Senate could be tough. Ukraine aid amongst Republicans is going to be tough. What is he going to get in return? He's talking about getting maybe uh, unfreezing the leases on drilling for natural gas. How do you see this playing out? Well, I think you have to be strategic about this. And first of all, as Americans, sit back and remember, where do we currently sit in the world? It looks a lot like the 1930s. You have Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea bounding together in an axis of evil. Um, they're looking for weakness in America. They, Israel was attacked on October 7th, and at no time should we ever waver on our support for Israel. I think they made a mistake by not funding Israel earlier. I would utilize it. We have the ability to help Ukraine with no American troops. That's what's been happening. No, but, but Mr. Speaker, time, we secure know that. Our own border. But, but just people that you really like, that are your friends, conservative Republicans, are no way want to vote for Ukraine aid. 
So does Speaker Johnson just get Democrats, a handful of Republicans, and pass it anyway? And if that well, does, in fact, happen, Marjorie Taylor Greene says he's, she's going to look to recall him like what, uh, what Matt Gates did to you. No, but what she's doing is much different than what Matt Gates is do, did. Um, she didn't make it privileged, so it's not up for a vote. And the one thing I've always found about Marjorie is she's a very serious legislator that deals with policy. And the best way to deal with anyone like that is sit down and talk to them. I don't believe the speaker has spoken to Marjorie. I think if you sit down and discuss, you understand you have Congress that you don't control all. You, you, you have to find common ground in between, and that can be done. Those are two conservatives that can do it. But the one thing I would tell you is, I knew back when I was there, we were going to be able to get border security with Ukraine. Right now, you're at a weaker hand that they're just talking about Ukraine only. I think there's a way to go about to bring everyone together on both sides. And you are the majority. You are the speaker. You're the Republicans, the majority in the House. I wouldn't sit down with the other three leaders. Why elevate the Democratic leader to being speaker? Go directly in with the president and negotiate. That's a stronger hand. That's what we did in the fiscal responsibility, how we cut $2 trillion, got welfare reform. All things that the Democrats would never agree right. to, but you use Use the strength of the majority to get it. So don't sit back and say, what can I do? Be the majority and sit back and say, this is what we're going to do, and negotiate it from a, strength, from a strong position instead and, of a And just strength. to online this really quick, you do not believe Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to go through with it? No, well, what Marjorie didn't make it privileged. What okay. she did is she sat yeah. down a marker, and the best thing anybody could do is sit down and talk to her. She has policy issues. There's a way to find common gotcha. ground. You did, we did it every day when we secured the border, Parents' Bill of Rights, our energy bill, stopping D.C. from lowering their criminal right. punishments. I mean, we were successful after six Those first nine months were very successful gotcha. in a very small majority. Mr. We Speaker, can do it again. Uh, always great to see you. I, I know the, if the former president becomes the future president, I know he's going to be calling 1-800-Kevin-McCarthy. At least uh, <laughs> I hope he does. Thanks so much, Mr. Speaker. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.